Long ago, Ganon, Prince of Darkness, stole the Triforce of Power. Princess Zelda of Hyrule broke the Triforce of Wisdom into eight pieces and hid them from Ganon before she was kidnapped by Ganon's minions. Link, you must find the pieces and save Zelda. Alright, hey everybody, it's Hylian Alchemist, and welcome to my first Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda for the NES. And the Virtual Console, if you just saw that, um, it says that, um, like, you know, on, on the logo where it says 2003. Yes, I'm playing this on the Virtual Console, for what you just saw. And, as soon as we enter this cave, we just picked up our wooden sword, and now we are ready for this adventure. So yes, um, I want to, uh, start things off by, uh, what... Well, I would be uh, what started the um, this awesome franchise I'm doing right now. Um, first of all, um, I think you guys want to know a little bit about me. Um, I am a diehard fan of The Legend of Zelda. I mean, I, I just I just love the series so much. I just, I just love the adventure, the great gameplay, and you know, just it, it, just the franchise in general. I just I just love it all, and it is without a doubt one of the greatest franchises of all time. So, yeah. Um, kind of bear with me on this one, because, I mean, this is kind of my, uh, first, um, well, I mean, first LP that I've, uh, done in a long time, and I, I'm, I'm a little nervous here. I mean, um, if you probably might not know this, I did have another YouTube channel back then, which I also did Let's Plays with live commentary, but it was kind of starting to weaken, and I realized that I might be a little better at, um, at doing post commentated LPs. Yes, yeah, this, this LP, well, all the LPs I'm going to do are going to be post commentated because I like to be the kind of guy that likes to be informative on those games. So I think it's better that way for me if I actually did post commentary. But, um, but yeah, just tr try to bear with me on this one because I am kind of nervous here. Well, I mean, I'm also excited, but at the same time, I'm also nervous, so. You might forgive me if my commentary if my commentary might not be as great as one might think. So anyway, I think we should just go ahead and get into the detail about this game. So the wooden sword, uh, basically it's your starter sword, and it's kind of the weakest sword, well, naturally. Um, for what you just saw there, if you have uh, full health here, then you'll be shooting out what are called sword beams, and you can actually shoot enemies, or you can actually kill enemies from a distance. Um, these guys right here are the Octoroks. Uh, the red ones are the easiest to kill, but the blue ones, well, they're a little slower, but they're a little tougher than the, uh, red Octoroks. But they're not that much of a threat, except that they'll be shooting these, um, these rocks out of their mouths. And what I just bought here were bombs, even though I didn't really need to buy some bombs, because we already got some, but I just wanted to show off where, um, where you can buy those bombs. And that one enemy that's shooting at us are called the River Zoras. But I'm not going to bother killing it right now because as long as you have the wooden sword, they take forever to kill. So once we get the uh, later sword upgrades, well, kind of not much of a spoiler because, well, they are upgrades, but once we get those upgrades, then um, we'll all probably uh, get to killing the Zoras. They'll be a little easier to kill this time around, but with the wooden sword, it, it really takes a long time. So anyway, um, right here is a heart container. It actually upgrades your health. I mean, you actually uh, find these uh, secrets here around these walls, but um, but I want I want to do I do want to say this though, is that this game is very much of a guide game because when the game first came out, as far as I remember, um, it actually uh, came with a guide of sorts, 
along with a map, because if you're playing this game without a guide, you're very likely to get lost. So, yeah. Um, I'm actually using the maps that, uh, from Zelda Dungeon. Um, I, I do recommend Zelda Dungeon if you want to look for a guide whenever, but, well, especially if you're playing this game, because, um, they, they are, they're very helpful, so I do recommend Zelda Dungeon for that. Um, I did print out a couple of, um, I, I did print out some papers about, um, using the maps for this game, so that way I won't have to get lost, because, you know, it kind of sucks to get lost. And, you know, um, like, you know, for instance, that gray box right here is the map. And it's really, really useless. Trust me, it, it is useless. So that's one of the reasons why you do need a legit map. L like, you know, a, a clear map. So either from an instruction booklet or by using Zelda Dungeon. And that's also the reason why that blowing up these, um, blowing up the walls with, uh, with bombs don't really look obvious. Not very much like later Zelda games, kind of, um, well, starting with a Link to the Past, where the, um, where bombs, well, well bombable walls become more obvious, so anyway. And yes, I know, I'm taking very, uh, I'm taking critical health, because, ladies and gentlemen, the start of the Zelda 1, at least, is very tedious and challenging, which is kind of weird, considering that you're starting your adventure. And, I know it seems rather cheap, but, because I'm playing this on the Virtual Console and on the Wii U, then I'm able to use, um, these, uh, Restore points, or like, you know, those, um... Oh, oh yeah, those, those restore points, you know what I'm talking about. I know it's very cheap, and I shouldn't be using those, but... It's very, very challenging, and very, very tedious, that sometimes it's gonna have to be necessary. Um, not to worry, though, later on, um, things will get a little, um, better at the time around, so I probably won't be using those, um, restore points that often. But, sometimes using those restore points, well... If you're actually playing on the uh, Virtual Console on the Wii U, it's kind of necessary. So, anyway, um, these enemies right here are called Moblins, and what they do is that they shoot out these um, arrows. That's really kind of a projectile, and they are relentless. They're merciless. They, they they very are. They're they're really merciless here because, like you know, they'll they'll always try to um to try to shoot you upon uh. Well, they'll find ways to shoot you, especially when they're all trying to gang up on you. Um, there are uh, two forms of moblins that we encounter. Like the red ones are, uh, they um, they're a little bit easy to kill, but the blue ones, the darker blue ones, kind of take a lot of hits. And you know, we actually did see a friendly moblin here once we had gone to that um, underground passage. Um, there are also friendly moblins here that will um. That will give you rupees as long as you keep it a secret. Like, you know, secret to everybody. But yeah, there are enemy moblins and the, um... And the, uh, friendly moblins here. But yeah, basically I'm just uh, showing off all the secrets. Well, at least the, uh... The ones, like, when I was using, uh, Zelda Dungeons maps. Yeah, I'm, do I'm doing exactly the way that, um... That the maps from Zelda Dungeon show. And, um... Another thing I didn't talk about is that, like, you know, um... Um, you know those, um, from what you saw on the counter, like, the rupees, um, rupees basically are the currency of, like, you know, the one I just picked up. Yeah, rupees are the currency for the Zelda series. Um, the flashing rupees, um, give you one rupee, well, except for the ones that, um, the, uh, mob ones are giving you, but I'm not gonna count that. <laughs> um, the blue rupees actually give you five rupees. So you might, you might want, you might want those. A, well, you're gonna need those a lot, or for certain times, because there will be things that you're gonna want to buy, and there are things that are really expensive later on in this game. And one more thing I'll probably have to talk about are the stopwatches. If you collect those, then the enemies will freeze, and that'll give you an easier chance to, um, to kill the enemies. Um, another enemy I want to talk about is that, like, you know, the ones that regarded the Secret Passage are the Armos. Um, once you touch them, they start moving. Um, sometimes they'll move a little slow, sometimes they'll move fast, and it, it can get, uh, pretty tedious, tedious as well. And last but not least, the Tektites. So, uh, we encounter the orange ones, and there were also the blue ones. Um, all they do is they, they just hop around, so they're not really much of a threat, and I think that's pretty much all I can talk about. And last but not least, uh, we have another heart container to go to just by entering this secret passage. 
And, um, I think we pretty much reached the end of the video. Uh, apologies if this was ten minutes long, but, you know, um, from, uh, like, you know, my recording session was about 19 minutes long because of the amount of deaths that I had to cut out. So it resulted in, um, this being ten minutes long, and I know this entire episode had me explaining the details about this game, but, you know, I like to be the kind of guy that, um, likes to be informative, so, eh. I, I don't know, that, that, that's just me sometimes, but... Anyway, on um, the next episode, we are going to continue on with more of these uh, collectibles or upgrades that we're going to be needing to start our actual adventure. Um, there's actually, well, for two more episodes, uh, it's going to be nothing but me collecting, getting these collectibles and upgrades, but... I think around episode four, that's when we'll start our actual adventure, and then we'll start tackling the dungeons, so... I'll do it, so... Thank you guys for watching, and next episode we'll be doing that. So, see you guys later.